Hello, sweeties. It is November 20th, the secret of spiritual growth. I will save myself a great deal of disappointment in my discipleship if I learn the secret of Christian growth. The secret lies in the word maturing. All natural organic growth follows that pattern. So also does spiritual growth. Not even salvation is instantaneous, except the pinpoint moment of decision. But before that electric moment comes, a chunk of time has elapsed, preparing me for the reception of the new life. If the preparation is long and sometimes tedious, it goes without saying that the fruits of salvation are also long awaited. This is because the new life operates within me on a time schedule, like a growing child. When the organism is ready, the child will walk. Well, is it an organism or is it a child? I say this should read, when the child is ready, the child will walk and talk, not before. Organism is way too big. It's not until I started reading these out loud that I found all these things that I think are wrong with it. I digress. So it is with the newborn child of God. Assuming that I surround myself with the proper means of growth, I should then expect the new life within me to develop toward the image of Christ. Not in one sudden burst, but in a series, in a series of maturity stages. Much of the emphasis I have heard on Christian growth is on crisis. I am too. Make a decision. And then instantly manifest maturity. Wrong! That leads to frustration. When Jesus said to Simon, Thou shalt be Cephas, John 1 42. I do not like the King James Version. Nobody talks like that anymore. Why do we use it? <sighs> Translated into modern English, you shall be Cephas, which is Greek for stone or rock. He was looking a long way down the road. Jesus was. So it is with me. Accepting Christ puts the package inside me. But walking with Christ allows the life to unfold within me, bringing about the changes God wants for me. How glorious to have God as our gardener, a vineyard of delight, dot, dot, dot. I, the Lord, am its keeper. I water it every moment. That's Isaiah 27, verses 2 and 3. Then we take root, dot, dot, dot blossom and sprout, and they will fill the whole world with fruit. Verse six. Man, all those dot, dot, dots, that's kind of annoying. All right, Romans seven, verse four. Therefore, my brethren, which is boys and girls, men and women, everybody that's a believer, brethren in Christ, you also were made to die to the law through the body of Christ, Jesus the Christ, Yeshua HaMashiach is also Jesus the Christ, that you might be joined to another, to him who was raised from the dead, that we might bear fruit for God. Bear fruit for God. What is this fruit? What is this fruit? That's, that's the result of our maturing. That's self-discipline. It's patience, it's long suffering, it's compassion. It's, uh, did I say perseverance? It's perseverance, I know that's in there. The fruit are good things, blessings that we pass on to ourselves and to others through the work of Christ in us, that is fruit. Heavenly Father, help us to yearn for you, not necessarily the fruit or the, the blessings of being your child, not child, your son, your daughter, because a child is just a child. It's not a son or daughter. That that uh, meaning isn't implicit in it. We are your sons and daughters. <sighs> Help us to yearn for more relationship with you. And you bless us. You have to because you are righteous. And when we choose righteousness, you, you bless us. Not just because it's the right thing to do, but because you love us and you want to bless us. 
But Lord, that also brings the attention of the enemy and he comes after us because he wants to stop it. So help us to expect it, but also know that you will protect us because our life is in your hands and you uphold us just like you said you would. <sighs> help us get our heads around this and bless us so that we can be a blessing to others and bring others to you and uh, make them into disciples. We ask this in the power of Jesus' name. Amen.